Hey folks, Tony Segretto here. You know, since day one, Catholic Health Services has been part of old school. And since we've started letting people know about them, it's changed their lives. You see, Catholic Health Services, while being recognized as one of the top places for stroke rehab in the country, it's also about a group of people who not just excel in what they do, from the doctors to the nurses to the therapist, on and on and on. It's how they do what they do every single day that separates them from the pack. They do it with a passion, unmatched, and the inclusion of family in every step of the process. Trust me when I tell you this. If you want the best unmatched rehab with a special group of skilled, caring people, there is truly only one place, and that one place is Catholic Health Services. Welcome one and all to another edition of the Defo Show with Luby. Today, no Defo, just Luby. Always thank you to Water Cleanup of Florida. Yeah, it was a very interesting weekend down here, not sports-wise, but you had the combo, the fun combo of heat, humidity, and rain. Not a great thing when it comes to our homes, but what makes it easier, I hope for all of us, is knowing the Water Cleanup of Florida is out there for you when it comes to water damage, fire, mold, with their licensed contractors, over 60 years of experience, and the fact that you can reach them 24-7, it should make the idea, the knowledge of an issue with your home a little bit more palatable. Look, all that I just said allows them to have, not only people come out and assess the situation, but they can fix it. And we're looking for anything that we can get to make our lives easier. Just found something with my home when it came to an air conditioner. The guy is, a, they're good at what they do. I was able to reach out to them, and I know today they're going to come out and take care of it. And it, it gives me peace of mind. And Water Cleanup of Florida will do the same for you. You can reach them again, 24-7, 954-579-0356. If you mention five reasons or Luby, five reasons or Luby, you get a free inspection during business hours. Check out the website as well, wcufl.com, wcufl.com. The socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Water Cleanup FL, Water Cleanup of Florida, we clean up your schmutz. As I said, no defo, just me. But at least today you get the treat of the man who founded Leeds Guides, and it's still a part of Five Reasons Sports, Ethan Skolnick. We dearly call him Ethan Scoop Skolnick. The Miami Heat had a very interesting weekend. Went up high Friday, tough game Sunday, fell to the Celtics, who will be in the finals versus the Warriors. What happened in this series? What's going on in this offseason? What can we look forward to for the Miami Heat? And what are their thoughts? Plus a little finals with Ethan Scoops going right here on the Defo Show. Without Defo, with Luby. Right here on the 5 Reasons Sports Network. You can always catch us each and every day with our South Florida content on this man network. Many men, many people's network now. But he started it. Five Reasons Sports were there each and every day. The one and only Ethan Scoops Golnick joins me now. Good morning, Ethan. How you doing? Good morning, Mr. Luby. I don't know. Yeah, I guess it is everybody's network, right? I don't even know what's on there. <laughs> I, I, just, I, just, I just turned it over. These guys do, guys and gals you have working there do a great job, and we're really appreciative to be a part of it and happy to be a part of it. So thank you for having us. Thank you for joining me this morning. All right, so let's get to it. It was a very interesting weekend. I was very loud and clear about how I felt about the Miami Heat going into the weekend, and you, I give you credit, and you were the first one to talk about the injuries, but you also were like, you would, what well, you've done all season, point out what the national media is saying. You were one of the first early people to point out what Draymond said and to point out how everyone had written him off. And I, a Heat lifer as a fan, had written him off because of what we saw in game four and five. And Jimmy Butler did what we've seen so many times since his Philadelphia and his Heat days, put this team on his back. Before we get to Sunday, what were you hearing about the Heat Friday that had you going? Okay, because it seemed like you were trying to calm everyone down a little bit and telling us this could be different than what we've seen in game four and five. Well, I'd heard that his knee felt a little better. Um, so that that's kind of where it started. You know, I, I think that if you look at if you look at the totality of their season, um, the one thing that they were was resilient. You know, we can talk about changes that they may need to make. 
and I'm sure that's coming on our network. People are already starting it, but you know, I think that <laughs> I think it started before it ended, but yeah. I, I think when you look at just the, the collective character of the team, um, there was no question whether this team would fight. I, I think we've seen a couple of heat teams recently. I think last year's team was kind of tired and yep. you knew that they were done uh, this year. You know, they were geared up for a long run and, you know, we thought that this was a team that was built for the playoffs and, um, I think as it turned out, it might have been a little bit more built for the regular season than we anticipated and maybe a little less for the playoffs. And I think that's something that they're going to need to address. I always use the phrase because it's a Pat Riley phrase, uh, the playoffs tell. And, you know, the the playoffs told you a lot about a lot of these guys. And, you know, when, when you have certain guys who step up and certain ones who don't, you know, what they do in the 82, it's not necessarily it doesn't matter. It does matter. But you're ultimately, you know, ultimately what the Heat are trying to build, and and I, I've had this conversation with people internally before this, uh, which is, you know, you're trying to build a team of okay, who are going to be our expulsions options at the end of a close game in the playoffs? Yep. You know how many how many good options does he have? Okay, and I think when we got to it by the end, you know. I'm not sure you can even get up to one hand, you know? And, and so, so I, th- I think that's where uh, some of this stuff is going to change. Um, the fact that he really only played, you know, six and a half or seven guys in game seven. Now Boston did too. Yeah. Um, but the difference is that Boston in game seven, um, they got something from all of them. Yep. Uh, the heat, the heat did not, you know, you look across Boston's rotation you know, they got 40 plus minutes from Horford. Uh, Grant Williams gave him decent minutes. Robert Williams gave him good minutes. Um, you know, Pritchard was really the eighth. He hardly played. He but if you look at the too. others, like if, if you look at the others, you know, they all, you know, and, and obviously Derek White gave him good minutes. And so, you know, Miami, you look across their rotation and all right, well, Caleb didn't play in game seven. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Hero yeah, was pretty much it. unplayable before the injury and then after the injury. <laughs> Duncan Robinson uh was unplayable throughout the playoffs and so you know deadman you know had been playable kind of hit the wall so i mean really by the end who was he left with you know he was left with playing jimmy 48 minutes um he was left with kyle playing when he probably shouldn't have yep. you know gabe gabe acquitted himself well during the playoffs i thought max had ups and downs but 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 he he kind of pushed through them yep but I, but I think when you look at it, you know, I think they're going to have to decide, okay, how many of these guys can we trust in close minutes of a, uh, of, a of an important game? And I, I think that's where the changes are going to come. Well, and I definitely, definitely, and I love where you're going because that's <laughs> the makes fun of me. I always think about the off season and love it more than the regular, more than the season half the time, especially since 2010 with the Heat, they've made the off season as interesting as the season. But before we go there, I did want to move on to Game Seven because. It it's so funny. I was so into the injuries game front game six, and I'd written them off. That once game six happened, I forgot about the injuries. I'm like, oh well, they can do it now. They're good, right? Which right. was not the case. They were still there. Mm-hmm. They were still a factor, and they reared their ugly head the entire game in game seven, and it led to one moment that people have debated that I've actually come back around on the big the three pointer with 20 seconds left for Jimmy Butler, and in the moment right after, I had lots of things to say. And then Eric Spolstra was not giving excuses. He was honest. And when he yeah. spoke after the game, I was like, oh, shoot. I didn't realize Tucker didn't play the entire second half. And Hero didn't play right. for three quarters. And Lowry right. should never even play. Like, they weren't even saying, oh, he's a warrior. They were saying, no, he shouldn't have been out there. It's like, okay. So how are they supposed to play five minutes of overtime? <laughs> like, right. And Jimmy right. knows this. And Jimmy sees his team will themselves for three minutes. And he has a shot to give them a lead, just play one more play, and you go to the finals, and he has to right. take it. And I was like, oh, shoot. I didn't even think about the – you just think about – because the basketball play, he had an old man who's unathletic, mm-hmm. outside the paint. It's an easy layup. And their defense probably could have got a stop. Okay, now you have to play five minutes. And I didn't even think about that. He defended the shot. Everyone defended it. And it actually makes sense now knowing the totality of what was going on with the whole roster. Yeah, I think there's a couple elements to this. Um, one thing is, I think I think Jimmy might have taken that shot, even if you weren't dealing with all that. Okay, so I think that's something that needs to be considered. Okay, um, but but in the context of that, it does make more sense, right? Uh, but here's the other part: if you just look at the play itself, just don't even go past it. Bam, um, 
did an incredible job defending on the other end. Yes. But but he hadn't started to move up the court yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kyle was moving up the court, but, I mean, I'm literally saying this. He was waddling. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I mean he, he, he was several steps behind <laughs> Jimmy and not in a particular rush. Yeah. So the only guys you had running up court were him were Oladipo and Struess. And if you look at Struess, he was kind of doubled. Yep. Like they, they, the, Miami really didn't have numbers. Okay. Yeah. And, and I don't really know what you're going to do with Oladipo there because, to be honest, on offense, I don't know what you're going to do with Oladipo the whole time. I, the, the, you know, kind of a lot of what we talked about with Vic played itself out uh, as the series went on, which was this about Vic. Vic's defense, no question about it. Okay, he he defended his ass off. Uh, they probably don't get as far as they do without him as a result of that, especially with Hero yep. being a non-factor. They needed somebody to plug in. But offensively, it only really worked for Depot this year when Jimmy wasn't playing. Mm. Uh, otherwise, he was kind of bouncing into Jimmy and Lowry, and it was just ISO. If you look at the game he had in the series, it was the game they were down, uh, you know, 30 in the first quarter, yeah, yeah. and then they just let Vic ISO. But, like, otherwise, he just doesn't really fit mm. yet in the context of their offense. Um, and, and this was... This was something, you know, you, if you re-sign him, and that's a discussion they'll have, obviously, then you have a training camp to work on it. But they didn't have it, and that's yep. one of the reasons they pulled that Eric pulled him out of the rotation in the first place with three weeks left in the season. So you look at Vic, I mean, what was his role going to be on that play? So if you're Jimmy and you're in rhythm, you're feeling good, you've got the home crowd behind you, maybe you are thinking in the back of your head about the fact that you're down bodies I, I think it was more so that he was just down bodies on that play. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I, you know, and more so than down bodies in the overtime. And so you pull up. Do I love the shot? No. Um, would I have been stunned if he made the shot? No. no. I mean, he missed it. He missed it front rim. Okay. I, I think that tells you, again, you were at a point there where, you know, there was fatigue. You played 40 um, minutes. He played, <laughs> played every minute. And, and, and so, so. So I, I just think that, you know, played every minute on a, on a knee that's still not right, that I still think a week or two from now we're going to get a release saying that, you know, he had it cleaned up. I, it's not major surgery, but he needs no, it no. cleaned up. So, so you know, you don't have time to do that during the playoffs. So basically, I, I don't have a big issue with the shot. Um, I think if you look at that game, you can pretty much make an argument they shouldn't have been in it yep. to begin with. Um uh, you know, I, I think that the, the, the big thing that, that they will try to figure out this offseason is why the three-point shooting fell apart. Yeah. Um, you know, because their defense gave them a chance to compete. Even in the last game, they only gave up 100. Mm. Okay. I mean, it's not like they were giving up 115, 120, getting blown off the floor. Nope. Uh, you look at the game, in, the previous game in Miami, they're up 42-37 at the half. Their defense gave them a chance to compete. They just struggled to make shots. Mm -hmm. Now, why the number one three-point shooting team in the league fell off a cliff uh, in the playoffs? The whole playoffs. It, the whole playoffs. Now, but if you look at it individually, it starts to make some sense. Yeah. Okay. Whatever you think of Duncan's season, he did shoot 37% from three on high volume. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a big chunk of that number that he just what player wasn't being used anymore. Uh, Struess's numbers fell off. Vincent's numbers fell off. That was kind of predictable because it's their first playoff run. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy was taking more threes, which should be a bad thing for your percentage, but actually his percentage was okay. Solid, yeah. So you really kind of throw that out. But the real thing that hurt them from three was Kyle's fall off and yep. Tyler's fall off. Yep. Those are the two numbers. If you look at overall, that's really, I mean, and Struess and Vincent was someone expected. So okay, so what are we saying about that? Is is uh, did was it injuries for both of them? Remember, Tyler was hurt after he wasn't playing yeah. well. Kyle <laughs> didn't shoot the ball particularly well the first two games of the playoffs before he got hurt. So yeah. that's what they've got to evaluate. Do they have enough three point shooting? And the other thing they've got, and also Oladipo took more threes than he did in the regular <laughs> season. That also hurts your percentage because he's not a good three point shooter really. So uh, you know he's he can be, but not consistently. So that's that's kind of to me that's if you just break it down like brass tacks. Okay, what what did them in? Oh, and PJ Tucker's number fell off too. Yeah. So like, it, it, so if you look at it, you say what what hurt them in the playoffs? They didn't shoot threes well. If they had more games where they shot threes well, they'd probably be in the finals right now. Um, you can't go through a prolonged sh a slump like that. They got by Atlanta. 
basically because they knew that the Hawks only had one guy who could hurt them. So yeah. they so they defended him. They got by Philly and Lar- well, partly it was MB. Part of it was Harden being ineffective. Part of it was just you know they out they out hustled that team, which I think we expected. Um, but but against a, a team that was going to match you from an effort perspective and a defensive perspective, you need to make threes, and they just didn't make threes. And that that is. Uh, we can talk about all the rest of this stuff, but yeah. you know they've got it. They, they've you know with three level scorer, somebody can get to the rim. They had some of that. They just did not make three point yep. shots. That that basically what happened. Well, and that's the thing. That's supposed to have been their issue in the past with a guy that can create his own shot. That actually wasn't. I kept. I'm like, no, guys are getting to the basket. They're not hitting shots. They just can't score. And some of it, I'm sure, is injuries. But you're right. Like hero, and that's. I guess the big question mark that Hero and Duncan are the things that I guess they have to figure out because, like you said, Vincent sort of rose to the occasion. Oladipo is a guy who didn't play all year, at least defensively, and he had some moments offensively, rose to the occasion. You know, Lowry shouldn't have been out there, but at least had some moments, and he's someone that has a lot of question marks around them, major question marks around him. Hero was the sixth man of the year. Hero was their second leading scorer, and you predicted and were close. He almost was their leading scorer. And he was useless in the playoffs. It was really weird. And he's a guy that's so full of swagger, he didn't have any of it. And now this is the second playoffs in a row. And he was healthy until the final of the conference finals. So now, whereas I, before we talk to you, I'm always excited. And you get me not sad, but like, okay, here's the reality. I think they have a lot to work off of going forward. But like you said, they have a lot of question marks. What are the biggest question marks? Because people are already talking about guys like Embiid. I haven't heard much about, but Beal, no. the Mitchell thing hanging. Embiid is not good. Embiid is not good. Well, I don't want him to be trading Joel Embiid. No, there's no reason for them to. But it doesn't matter. Like I would, right. we don't need bigs. Like this game isn't about the big. The game, it's just not even a, a, a big like Embiid. Like the team doesn't need to be. It's Beal and Mitchell, whatever. So with all that, with the hero, where they've been in the past, not really wanting to get rid of him, and he grew but he still is this. Bam is a guy that is aggressive depending on how people get him the ball, which is what you've talked about so much. Where are they now? And what do you look, because Riley isn't going to lose the Celtics and sit rest on his role. Like, that's not happening. So, like, what are, what are your expectations? What are you hearing? What are some of the things you think that they're going to try and do and may actually be able to do? Well, it feels a little bit to me like 2005 where they got to the conference finals, had injuries. That time it was Dwayne. Yeah. Obviously, he was hurt. Um but played in game seven and, uh, and then, you know, Pat changed the whole thing in the yep. off season, you know, with, with, with Dwayne and Shaq as the pillars and he brought in five guys. Um, you know, I, I think that there are always going to be questions about the bam Jimmy build because offensively they tend to take turns. They don't, they don't, yeah. they don't really fit perfectly on offense. Uh, we did crazy thing is game seven is one of the few games. They did. It was like, okay, those two guys <laughs> did it. Yeah. Um, but so, but I, I think that that will be the build here. Now, Kyle's money is Kyle's money, and I I, I don't know who's taking Kyle's money. So, so I, I feel like you're there. So really, I mean, we, we're just going to keep coming back to the same thing here, you know, which is, it, you know, Bam and Jimmy need a guy who can consistently score to kind of make the thing work. And is Tyler that guy or not? Now, now th- th- this is not a question of whether Tyler will become that guy. It's a question of, is he on Jimmy's timeline? It's a question we've asked a lot. Now, this year, it looked like he was. Um, the, the the playoffs were disappointing. Now, you can point to particular reasons for it. Uh, one reason that the playoffs were disappointing uh, was for him was because of the way he was guarded, which was different. And, you know, um, Philadelphia basically, you know, Jimmy probably doesn't have the series he has against Philadelphia unless Tyler is out there because, you know, they, they guarded Tyler a certain way that allowed Jimmy to Jimmy drive. Him. So he did serve a role there, but you were hoping, you were kind of waiting, okay, when does the breakout for Tyler come? And yep. with the exception of a quarter or two, there was one quarter against Atlanta, maybe I think it was Atlanta, that he had, you know, he and Bam kind of hooked up with a pick and roll consistently for one quarter. And then other than that, there wasn't a lot there. So I, I, I think that... They're going to be open to moving him. They're not looking to move him. I, I, that's the difference. But but you see, that's the thing though. Like one of these guys has to ask out. Like you, you can't. I mean, this this Bradley yeah. Beal thing. We've been doing this for five years. Yeah. Like, is he serious about asking out, or is he not serious about asking out? You know, Dame Lillard. I, I don't think is going anywhere right now. Still, you know, Donovan Mitchell is the one. But I, everybody always looks at this from the Heat perspective. Like, okay, if Donovan Mitchell is on the open market. 
is Tyler here? Maybe he is, but is Tyler Hero the best player that's going to be offered for his services? And then you're, you're attaching Duncan's contract to make the thing work and some assorted other pieces. Like, I, like people say, I'm not against that. Like yeah. Donovan Mitchell is a great player. Now Donovan Mitchell has his own warts, um, which is one is that defensively he has not been good the past couple of years. Now you, you may project what he was when he came out of college and say, you can get him back to that. The same with Beal, to be honest. Um, you know, but you know, Donovan was on a, a competitive team that was competing for a Western conference championship and still was not defending. Now yeah. I, I don't know how much of the issues he's got with Gobert or whatever and how that played into it, but um, they would have to fix that. But and and look, this year they're you know when they got Kyle, I said they're gonna have to get him in shape. They didn't do that, no. so I'm I'm curious about about the fixing stuff, how that works. So yeah, would I want you know for the Heat's sake, does Donovan Mitchell make Miami better? Of course he does, but are they offering him? Is Hero is Hero and Robinson and picks gonna be enough? Um, I'm not sure. As far as Duncan's status goes, look, I feel for Duncan. Um, they paid him for a reason, I, I, they, they, and and shooting is a commodity. Uh, but it just really comes down to those three words that I keep saying: the playoffs tell. And this is now the second straight postseason uh, that Eric really well. He played him against Milwaukee the previous year, but even the year before in the, in nah. the bubble run, they pulled him out at certain times down the stretch. Frig Wadala. This time. He really didn't play him at all. And remember, he he's his guy. Like that Eric was the one who pounded the table to keep Duncan here. You know, so if he's kind of given up on it, I, I think you have to acknowledge that that's sort of happened. I think they see with Struess more to build on in terms of his physicality, um, in terms of his athleticism yep. that, that Duncan doesn't really have. He's not uh the threat though that duncan is as a three-point shooter so you're giving up a little bit of that that but i think that they've made a decision and look max is under contract for the minimum next year and so is gabe so like they're not going anywhere they're the only they would only go somewhere if a team was like all right to make this deal work throw in one of them but they're not making money work or anything like that and i think the heat would be reluctant to do it unless they have another option that they know uh, is ready. The young guys they have in the system now are not really that kind of player. Haywood Highsmith, they like a lot. They'll develop him this off season. Um, you know, and we never know what these guys are going to become, but, but because, you know, of their, their, you know, Yurt is another guy they like, <laughs> they're going to try to develop this off season. So they, ha- and Javante smart, they like too. I mean, they have some players in the system again, but you know, Max and Gabe being, you know, participants, you know, major participants, yeah. occasional starters on a, on an Easter conference final team. I don't know if they have one that's close to that, but we'll see. Summer league always tells. All right. Before we let you go, I know you're a busy man. The NBA finals starts this Thursday. I uh, would like to get a little take on it. To me, it, it feels like the Celtics uh, went toe to toe with the heat team. That was battered. The Warriors are just running through everyone. It, it feels like the Warriors are as healthy as they've been the entire year. At the wrong time for everyone else, the right time for them. Even Clay's now hitting threes, which they were winning in spite of that. Draymond was being hard and hustle guy, and now he gets 17. Like, Curry now looks like himself. And then Poole, if Curry's a little off, is a, a little mini Curry. Like, they just look – and that was the other thing to me where I was like, okay, I'd like to see the heat there, but they're not beating this team. And I think the Celtics are very similar in that mold. What are your? What is your take on the finals? I have some friends that are like, well, it'll go six. I'm like, it may go six. I I don't know. I think this Warriors team hasn't even taken anyone seriously yet, and I think they're finally going to do that now. Good luck, Celtics. Like, what are your your take on the finals? Yeah, I, I've had a weird feeling about Golden State all year because um, uh, they're not as good as the no, they're, they're the Durant team. Dynasty, dynasty teams, right? Well, even the non Durant, I, I feel like some of those teams were clicked more. The Harrison Barnes, when Harrison Harris Barnes was in that spot, Clay was at a different level then. Um, you know, and I think to a certain degree, Steph was too. I, I don't think Steph is prime, prime Steph now. But but do they have enough? I, I think so. I think the only thing that, that could really challenge them is Boston's sort of size, length, ability to switch. Okay. Uh, will be I, – I do think that will give uh, Golden State problems in some games. But, again, Golden State's really good at kind of pa- – I mean, Boston's really good at packing the paint. Um, they're going to – they will – you know, Golden State's going to get Shoot. some looks. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and and that that's that's problematic. Um, I I like the Warriors in this series. I do think it's a six or seven game series. Okay. Though. I, I okay. think, um, I, but I think something to watch with the Celtics is that, 
you know, th- again, they didn't play a lot of guys uh, in games six and seven. And so Udoka has really shrunk the rotation. And uh, and so I, I wonder how much they have left. I, that, I, I would be curious on that. Also, Tatum, for all the tra- anointing him as a top five player, he, he can have some really erratic offensive halves um, and, where he just doesn't shoot the ball well at all. And and so, you know, they have too many. He has too many of those and he takes them out also. And Jalen was a little inconsistent against Miami, too. So I, I do like Golden State in this series. I, I think what it's going to show is that what the Heat thought before this year and why, I think why they're going to look at this as such a missed opportunity. Like when, when they were making the Lowry decision this offseason, you know, one of the reasons they decided to pay the extra year at that money was, bec- and comp- you know, and actually try to compete was because they looked at it and they said there was no real favorite for the NBA championship this year. There were like six to eight teams that could be in the mix. Um, and they were right, okay? I mean, and for a variety of reasons, they were right. Obviously, Brooklyn, you know, was totally dysfunctional. The Lakers fell apart, um, you know, but then, you know, Milwaukee had the Middleton injury. Uh, Phoenix, you know, had, you know, Phoenix at the last, <laughs> the wrong time, okay? And then, you know, you looked at, you know, Philadelphia obviously was in transition and you didn't really trust their character. And then, you know, you had... And I don't even know if they really saw Boston as a serious threat before this year. I don't think a lot of people did. So, you look at all that and Memphis kind of shot out of nowhere, although people thought that they, they could be good. Dallas was not a team people were talking about. So you look at all that, they really thought this thing was wide open and they were right because I, I think I think a B plus champion is gonna emerge here. Like I, I don't think there's there's an, an all time great. Right. You know, I, I think there's there's a, gonna be a very good team that sort of benefits from circumstances. In Golden State's case, they didn't end up seeing Phoenix, right? Um and and it, which I think would have been a really interesting series. And Memphis didn't have Morant. Morant, at the end. <laughs> right? And you look in Boston's case. I mean, you know, if, I mean, just look at their run. I don't. I don't know that Brooklyn beats them anyway. But obviously, that Brooklyn team was not what people thought they would be. You look at round two. They no, get Middleton. Milwaukee without Middleton. They get Miami. Uh, you know, completely beat up. And, you know, and Phoenix last year benefited from all this too. Yep. If you remember Phoenix's series, yep. the Lakers weren't healthy. They kind of, so I think this is kind of the new model now. Mm-hmm. You don't really have, you know, these big three type teams. You really have two star teams for the most part. And then it's kind of collective pieces. And because of that, an injury to one of them, uh, you know, changes the equation. And so I, I just don't think, I, I think the Heat are going to go into this offseason thinking, okay, you know, there's no Golden State with Durant. There's no LeBron, you know, on a dominant type team. And we can we can be part of this mix again. And I think that's what Pat's going to say. I think Pat's going to say, you know, we're in the game, you know, and, and they will be in the game. As long as they have Jimmy healthy, I think we can say that now, that they're going to be in the game. But you need some breaks. And – um they didn't get yeah. some breaks yeah. uh, this year, and and they're not and they were not the kind of dominant team that could overcome um, issues. They had they had to be clicking. Yep. Um, but I just I, just to go full circle on this, I, I think the big thing they're going to look at is why were we down to so few guys? Yes, like why for a deep team? Yep, for a deep team, and and, and so. I wouldn't anticipate Deadman is back. Mm. I think they'll give Yurt. They'll maybe bring someone else in and give Yurt a chance to compete. Uh, I think, like I said, Hero is Hero Robinson. Hero Robinson. That's going to be certainly discussed. I think they bring Caleb back, but I think at the right price. I think if he gets too big an offer from somewhere else, uh, they like him. But I think they think they can probably find another. Again, he didn't play a lot as things went on. So, and it, it goes back to Derek Jones Jr. In, in the bubble two years ago that that he didn't play a lot, and then they just kind of let him walk. So I, I just think the playoffs tell. I just keep coming back to that, and um, you know. Golden State's good. Would Miami have beaten them in the finals in this state? Well, no. this hurt is what I'm saying. Yeah, this hurt, right? Yeah, yeah, this hurt. No, but but I think I think otherwise. I think that that it would have been a very representative final. So it's it's just it's unfortunate without the excuses, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. I, that's I, when I was talking about injuries. I wasn't trying to say like the the, the mean the Celtics. I was just you could see <laughs> like right. they were putting seven guys on the injured list, and they and Butler wasn't letting them name him. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, I well, mean. Timmy's Jim. It is what it is, though, you know? Like, you that's the one thing you can't just mask. And the, the, he did it as good as anyone can. This man does it better than anyone. At Ethan J. Skolnick, at the number five reason sports. Check him out. I know Fan Analyst is doing its thing, and you're working on that as well. So appreciate you joining us. Thank you for having us on Five Reasons. And check this man out all over the place. Thanks, Scoop. We appreciate it, man. 
All right. Take care, Gloobie. Be well, my friend. So just stop playing around. Ah, said, no, he's said, in Italy. He's, he's like traveling the world. At 70 years old, he takes his first trip to Europe. So we wish him up. There's no, not a lot of gambling there. So he's probably uh, shaking a lot. Yeah, so. he, he, yeah, I was going to say withdrawal. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> Thanks, Gloobie. I appreciate it. The one and only Ethan Skolnick joining me here, the Defo Show. Without Defo, with Luby. Once again, thank you one and all for joining in, listening to the Defo Show without Defo, with Luby here on the Fiverr Sports Network. Going to be an interesting offseason for the Miami Heat. A lot of questions when it comes to a guy who showed a lot of promise in Tyler Hero, but once again fell flat in the playoffs. Bam Adebayo, guy that showed promise regular season playoffs, but only did it in spurts. Oladipo was a beast defensively. How does he fit in going forward? Is he a trade chip with a Tyler Hero? Are there guys like Bradley Beal and Donovan Mitchell that will say we want out and Miami's where they want to go? A lot of questions, but you know what the Miami Heat after, the way they finish, they gave us a lot of hope this year, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun in the offseason, and they're going to give us a lot of hope next year. We will turn our attention to the Miami Dolphins, the Miami Hurricanes when it comes to football, and we still have the NBA Finals as well. So much more to come. Check us out again each and every day on our exclusive content when we do uh, nas- more national stuff, the Believe Network, B-L-E-A-V.com. Search after hours. It's another morning where you could see Ethan himself this morning, just between 7 and 9 a.m. Google The Defo Show, D-E-F-O. And right here, each and every day, our South Florida content, The Defo Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Hey folks, Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously. Friendly atmosphere, not too loud, but good energy, reasonable prices, and a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, (laughs) no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food. Amazing atmosphere. Good for a family, good for a date, or just a night out for yourself, and prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched. Steaks, hand cut every day. Everything, and I mean everything, is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low-carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation location because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup. All you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. Their hours have changed a little bit. Monday through Thursday from 3.30 to 10. And Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11.30 to 10. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have... They're amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar, and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home.